God, yo, what is it good for? Absolutely. Oh, nope. you're leaving me hanging. How could you I leave said, me I hanging? I said it. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, we were answering it as accurately oh, as, as possible. You, you we took it you literal. Nothing. I got oh, it, like shit. a nut, like a like a like a like the X Factor Look, man, zero sum. People don't come to TSG for the surface level shit. Ah, right? uh, that's no. true. No, they're, no, they're here. They're here to get down dirty. That's true. Usually the Don't impression is press, still waters. Press ready to pod. You know, we usually go with still waters run deep, but we're 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 not so still. <laughs> we try and run deep <laughs> and loud and obnoxious. You know, we also don't what we get do. very. We also don't get very down and dirty. But hey, I threw it out there. I mean, try. You know, it's, it's a party, man. Let's see what happens. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, someone might throw a chair and take it a little too far, right? See what I did there? That's a that's an inside joke there for the for the for the. Steam oh, if we're, if we're gonna talk about fucked up parties, believe me, I, I'm from Framingham. I got plenty. I got- <laughs> I got I'm from Framingham <laughs> to our to our <laughs> listeners who are, who are listening to this and some of you worldwide. He's not joking. I'm just saying this is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> again. That's a little inside mass thing. But oh, man, no, it ain't no party like a Framingham party. <laughs> we, <laughs> let, let's just say that we are there to fight and fuck your house up and drink. And it's yeah, basically in that order. No, nope, no, nope. there. Are the, the, those are the parties that the propane tank might get thrown on top of the bonfire just to see what happens, even if we, you know what's going to happen. We had a seven town alarm fight one time, and the best part about it is all I remember from that fight is this kid standing in the middle of a road of again a seven town alarm. That means people, seven towns, including Framingham, had to send police to this goddamn fight. And the best part is everyone remembers the same thing. This kid standing in the middle of the road, I mean, in the middle of the street, in the middle of this fight, and all he's yelling is, where's my brother? Where's my brother? Well, he got the answer because, again, it's a goddamn huge-ass seven-town alarm fight. And someone told him where his brother was because apparently he was in the ether because this dude ran 50 yards. Everyone saw him. It was like a movie. Everyone just immediately zoned into this one person running through the crowd, about 50 yards head start, cocks back 10 yards in, and just launches the perfect, the most perfect punch I think we all saw. And this kid, like, I think just fell dead. Like, I think he just, mm. he just, he took that shot right across the jaw and he found where his brother was because I think he was knocked out too. I don't know. <laughs> Frame it, man. <laughs> Damn, you got knocked the fuck out. Seven yeah. town alarm. And does that even make the top 10 of the parties that you made in Framingham? No, no, no I, I didn't think so. We, I, I, we only remember it because that kid got knocked out in the middle of the street yelling for yeah. his brother. Yelling for his brother. Where the fuck's my brother? <laughs> and the best part is he was in the fight. Like, it wasn't like some little kid who ran in there and was scared for his, his brother. Like, he was, a, he was part of the reason the fight started. Like, that was the best part. It's like, bro, oh, keep your head on the swivel. What, what's wrong with you? You started this thing. No, uh, memorable would be a kid being told if he didn't fight uh, in the fight that everyone was watching because this was a glorified fight, damn near pay-per-view, um, that uh, he was going to get fucked up and the kid he was going to fight was going to get fucked up. So it was a weird sort of survival moment where everyone was kind of like, wait, how are we all involved in this fight? We just came here to watch the fight. And the best part is this kid's telling us, one of the kids in the fight, uh, he's telling us later on because we saw him walking down the street with blood coming down his head and we're like, hey, man, what happened? Y'all good? Like, tell us about the fight. He's like, all I remember is we were told if we didn't fight, we're getting fucked up. And then I looked up and I saw a brick coming out of my head. And that was it. Like, that. that's mm. that's as calmly as my man said it and he's kept it moving. He didn't want to ride home, which I found a little bit reckless, but whatever. Okay. No, 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 he didn't want to waste the gas. Good for good on him. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're a physical lot up here. Probably, probably staying cold, staying warm. But yes, Trooper. believe it or not, you have tuned in to another exciting episode of the Steam Gentleman, your number one stop for pop culture, social commentary. Back down here in the Steam tunnels again to take on yet another critical issue for our world, our society, and for our very survival. Once again, I am joined as always by my man the star child greg descends how we doing today oh uh uh, ready to uh look the imperialists in the eye and say you tried nice (laughs) (laughs) you gave it your best shot you tried you tried 
I didn't hear no, I didn't hear no bell. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Or never got me down, Ray. All right. (laughs) That's it. Well, I'm glad to, glad to hear you are squared up and ready to take, you know, take one on the chin here uh, for, for our, for our subject matter today, as, as we were talking about there already fighting and, you know, we've, we've heard a little bit about some of the, some of the bouts that, that the three of clubs faced off, but how, how are you doing today? Are you, are you, are you safe and warm today? Three of clubs. What did it do? How did he do? Um, let's be clear. I was not involved in any of those fights. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm not even close. No, no. I, I was always down to watch, you know, normally to be fair, if we're talking the seven alarm fight anywhere else, um, if there's like more than 10% dark people, that means people are getting shot or someone's getting fucked up. No, cops just came because it was that many kids. Uh, so we're talking like a lot of white kids. So I was always down to just watch a bunch of, you know, mostly privileged, not always uh, kids just want to fight and beat the shit out of each other. I was never involved in that. And people haven't figured out, I, I, if people haven't figured out, I got literally nothing for today's subject, so I am stringing this bitch along as best as possible. I, if you allow me, I will pull this into a ten episode arc. I mean, oh well, I will, yeah. I will stretch this subject matter out because I got nothing today. <laughs> so mm. again, <laughs> again, Rashan is is uh, on his way to class, writing yep. writing the paper, <laughs> writing the book report on yep. on the on <laughs> on that. So we 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 know we're we're definitely. In an episode of the look, same I can tell you right now, I have definitely gotten a few decent grades by reading the back of the cover and doing my best to expand that as long as I fucking could. I mean, like we're talking five minutes of material just from like three paragraphs from the back of the book and maybe a couple of pages in the mill. I mean, but to be fair. I know I'm off on a tangent, but you speed readers, I, I'm calling bullshit. I'm really get, I'm thinking you guys are guessing at a lot of that shit and you're just saying you're reading the book. Uh, I don't know about that. Wait, there's a reason the expression Bunch of liars. Is, there's a reason the expression right. is fake it till you make it. We, we, we know that, but you're doing the same thing I did. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You're doing the same thing I did. Two yeah, pages exactly. in the front, two pages in the middle, two pages in the end. Read the back. Yeah. You're good. You're good. You gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hang in there and absolutely fake it till you make it. But yes, well, you know, it, there was, uh, we, we record a slightly in advance, but not too much these days. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we've, we've moved from the disease uh, part of the book of Revelation into the war part of the book of Revelation this week, this last past week. We are a week into the Russia Ukraine conflict. So yeah, it kind of gets on your mind. What can I say? Uh, and I just couldn't help but but notice and, and and bring it up and thought we you know we we gotta we gotta talk a little bit about war uh, a little bit about war and pop culture, uh, you know uh, uh, as we're going on because yeah you know here I am look it's no secret that all three of us are '80s kids to to one degree or another you know I, I, Rashawn you're, you're you're you've been conscripted into Gen X whether you like it or not that's just kind of the way it is I know you're technically not but. You've got such a Gen X mindset. Uh, and yeah, we, you know, this is, it really feels like in an odd way, uh, all the, all the fear and anxiety that that's been the last couple of years, as we've reached this part of the story, there's a part of me that's like, Oh, this again, I'm, I'm back home. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, I, I, this, I get right. You know, People, you know, getting sick, people yelling at each other because they wear a mask because they don't wear a mask. All that stuff is anathema to me. I, I, I'm scratching my head. Not getting a vaccine, getting a vaccine doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This was all stuff I, you know, never had to grow up with. But, hey, Russia yeah, being the yeah, bad yeah, guy. Sorry, I don't mean to cut it. But yeah, you did. You already got the vaccines. That's well, the there point. is that. There is that. I don't, I don't understand the fighting over it myself. But we'll move on. I won't dwell. I won't dwell too much. Uh, but, yeah. Russia being the bad guy, this I get fear of fear of nuclear annihilation. I'm totally down with that. I, I feel an odd kind of comfort. It feels it feels a bit like coming home. I I, I can't deny it. So I uh, you know kind of kind of drag the uh, drag the conversation over to that uh, as I start in on my on my ten minutes of fame here. Um, I couldn't help but just notice that I felt like I'm uh, you know watching the news this week. I can't help but but feel like I'm back in a movie theater. 
uh, you know, in the in round about the year, I think 1982, 1983, in that range of things, watching all of my 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 favorite young actors defend our country valiantly in a little film known as Red Dawn. Um, <laughs> and that's just what struck the hell out of me this week is that, you know, here it was just a little case uh, where where reality met fantasy met you know propaganda met the movies where everything was there so for those of you who are, not, are were not born in the 80s and didn't see this film four times in the theater like i did and then countless times on on vhs i'll i'll even leave i'll try and leave the the trailer in the um the episode description uh it, this is a, a mythical situation uh in in the 80s where uh, Russia is on the ropes with uh, failed crops. NATO has been dissolved in this in this world, uh, and the U.S. is alone. And somehow the Russians actually fly all the way over from Russia, come down through Alaska and through Canada, and attempt an invasion of the United States. And you know, it 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 it, it comes down to ordinary citizens. In this case, teenagers who um, managed to escape to manage to escape to the mountains of Colorado and become the partisan resistance and uh, name themselves after their high school football team, the Wolverines, or as we became to know, the Wolverines, um, you know, and this was this jingoistic um, expression of the United, of the United States in the 1980s. This film in a lot, in so many ways is peak eighties. And it was absurdity and it was craziness. And it was a war film of you know, of the finest measure. And I absolutely loved it. Right. Um, but I don't think I got it at the time until, I don't know, watching number, you know, viewing number 500. It's a war film. And we were talking about this earlier before we got, before we got on air that, you know, there's the, the problem with war films is there's no way uh, to make them a hundred percent anti-war, even if you are, you know, uh, where we haven't really found one that that totally successfully makes it anti-war, even if it's trying to. There's always flaws in it. And this film, this film is no exception to that. This film has flaws. It has this, you know, it has action montages and, you know, as these, as, as these kids take it on, it has a, a, a score that absolutely gets your American heart pumping, uh, you know, as these brave citizens uh, take on, uh, take on a, a far superior force. However, I can't miss the juxtaposition of what's going on in the world right now. And I don't want to get too, you know, too into it. There's, there's all kinds of problems, all kinds of flaws, but you, you do have civilians now taking on, you know, the same kind of mechanized force, the same, some of the same equipment that was on screen in the eighties right now uh, by a smaller nation. And it's, it's kind of astonishingly, it's, it's kind of, it was, it's kind of astonishing to me in some ways, how accurate it, it becomes <laughs> at least and, and, and uh, at least in a surprising case uh, of how, how, how this invasion thus far has turned out. But it, it got me wondering, you know, what, what, is it, what does the war film hold? It, uh, you know, where, where is it, what does it hold in our place, in our consciousness here in America? Um, because we're seeing, you know, we're watching it again unfold, uh, un unfold on, our, on our screens on a daily basis. When I go back and watch this movie now, one of the things that strikes me is it, it did attempt, it attempted, and you can certainly argue how well it does. It also did try to attempt to show just how unpretty this all was. Uh, you know, when I go back, you know, when I saw it, I was a child. So I watched it like a child. There was all these neat explosions. And as I say, the scores there and the kids, you know, and the kids are there and they're fighting back, and, you know, and it's America. Fuck yeah. Go on out and get, you know, kill those Ruski bastards, right? It's, it's what we want to see. Uh, but when you go back and watch it, there's, there's a really not so un dark undertone to this. It was just there. I just was too young and too stupid to understand it. Um, the, the kids have to go, uh, uh, when they're trying to figure out what happens, there's utter confusion, and you never entirely learn what happens. Um, at one point, they, the two of the main characters, uh, oh, sorry, three of the main characters um, go and they try and, uh, and they find their father who's in a re-education camp and is being, you know, brutally beaten and starved by the Russians, right? This is the, this is the highlight. They find his father. Um, at that scene, you find out that one of the other, other kids, uh, uh, father has been killed for helping them escape into the mountains, uh, because they, they find out that he gave him, uh, some weapons, gave him hunting rifles to, uh, to go and, and shoot deer with. 
Um, so this is, you know, this is one of the bright spots of the movie. <laughs> Later on, they see they see that that same father executed, uh, you know, uh, for whatever, not towing the line enough and, and being somewhere along the invasion, which is what sparks their 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 desire to uh, launch themselves into a, into a partisan resistance. Um, and it, it does even track them through it. It does even track them to the brutal realities of uh, forming that resistance. Their very first attack is clumsy. It's terrible. The guy ends up chasing him through the woods. He gets shot with an arrow. They, they have no idea what they're, what they're in for and what they're, what they're doing. Uh, but they quickly learn and they, they, they start to, to push on. Later on in the film, one of their own is discovered to have gone back into town and given them up to the Russians and swallowed a transmitter so that a, a small paratrooper team can try and track them into the, into the forest. It's the 80s, so nowadays, frankly, it would have been, been a lot easier to find them. Um, and after, after they discover this and discover, you know, they, they take one of the guys, one of the, um, one of the uh, soldiers hostage after killing the rest of his, uh, of his uh, platoon, which is pretty dark. And this movie doesn't, you know, this movie does show a lot of blood, a lot of violence, and doesn't entirely uh, uh, pull its punches. Um, early on, when the, uh, when the uh, Russian troops first parachute in, they shoot into a classroom and one kid is hit in the head. And they show him, you know, just laying there dead amongst all the others. And then in this scene, going back to what I'm describing, when they discover their betrayal of their friend, they execute him, right? They, they go to this point where it's just absolutely, you know, and one, one character can't do it because he's too close to him. So another, char- the, another character has become so hard bitten, he just does it, you know, coldly and without, without, without remorse. Um, and then finally, all but two of them die. Right, which realistically, when you look at this, it, it and that's why I find it interesting as an American film, and at least it attempted to. And as I say, we can certainly have the debate about how well it pulls it off. Uh, your odds in such a situation, which is as we're seeing right now, are not good. It's not like a movie. You're not going to make it out, or the likelihood of you making it out is very small. Right now, coming out of Ukraine, because we live in the age that we live in, and again, I'm not trying to, to, to cheerlead or put even too much of a, of a moral side on this. Um, they're posting a lot of videos of, uh, on YouTube or things are making the, the rounds of the web of, of partisan attacks like this, of people you know, running up, just doing crazy shit to r- Russian armored columns and, and everything. Um, and I was watching a, a, another a commentator on YouTube, a um, uh, guy that goes by the moniker of Bo of the Fifth Column. And he points out, he says, listen, don't get, don't get deceived by these, right? You're seeing the ones where they made it out. The ones that aren't being shown around are the ones where the camera just ends up pointing straight at the sky, right? He says, you know, you, you. He says these are the ones where it kind of went okay because, yeah, you know, am- he, says, he says, one thing amateurs do in war is they die very well. And that, you cannot stop that. You cannot change that. Now, you can't, you know, the other uh, thing they do very well is they have the element of surprise because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So you can't know what the fuck they're doing. So that, you know, has this compound effect of terror, all sorts of things that go on. It says, but don't mistake the ones you're seeing where they get out. Okay. Because there's, you know, it's at least a one-to-one, if not a three-to-one ratio where somebody doesn't make it right. Um, And it, and as I said, you know, far from a perfect film, but when I want go back and watched it through the years, I thought it held up in a decent manner that it held up better than I thought uh, that it was, you know, it sort of laid out those stark realities, right? The fact that, you know, I think it starts off with 10 of them or whatever. And at one point they pick up, uh, they pick up a hardened uh, military pilot who gives a great speech about war and about why they did it. Uh, and I think applies to ourselves today where he ends on the thought of maybe they just forgot what it was like. And sure as hell, that seems to be where we're back today. Um, yeah. Yeah. As I say, as as a war film, you know, frighteningly enough and sadly enough, I got to look back on it right now and say <laughs> held up a little better than I thought it would in, in those interim years. So I'll, t- I'll, I'll step down from my from my couple of minutes there, turn it over to some thoughts uh, as, as we as we move along today on our on our grim and gruesome subject matter. I and mean, I, well, I see what you're saying. I, I, I don't know. I always thought of that movie as kind of like a. a I don't know. Like, you remember that movie Toy Soldiers with Sean Astin? I didn't really. 
How <laughs> dare you? You could have been with that name, by the way. So seriously, but I was entertained by it. Like I yeah, thought it was really good. I didn't think something. I didn't think it really uh uh touched on serious global issues <laughs> except for you know stoking cold war anxiety amongst americans um, oh it it definitely did that yeah exactly <laughs> they, could, they could be here at any minute but it really made me think of the movie canadian bacon <laughs> <laughs> hey now in all fairness that didn't come out to like the 90s so come on yeah just but still years. you know just like these yokels getting all worked up because of the supposed threat of just you know that whole notion and that um uh, at the, in that period, um, yeah, it, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't put me on edge like that. It didn't really ring true to me on any level. But uh, you know, Patrick Swayze was the man, uh, for sure. Uh, Josh, I think you make one hell of a point, or parodying um, Bo the Fifth Column's uh, point. Which, <clears throat> quick side note, people. There's a lot more people in the South that are like Bo the Fifth Column. I, I'm just going to point that out. A lot of people have a misunderstanding of this country because you hear the very vocal, idiotic minority. There's a lot more people like those guys who are just like trying to live life straight. But anyway, uh, the technicality of war, um, I, I think, is an interesting point that you bring up. and It's something that we always kind of skip over when we fantasize about being in those situations. And I think a parallel in a different film that showed that in a very powerful way to me at least was um um save a private ryan where even in that situation where you had trained soldiers when they had to improvise to take out the mechanized unit one of the soldiers I mean, they all knew they had a very small margin for the sticky bombs that they were using and that it wasn't exact and even one of the soldiers was blown up before he could even get to the mechanized unit. Um, and it was just, to me, it was just a very strong point of, hey, this is so far into what hell actually is that even the people who are trained for this are, are up against some weird fucking odds. Um, and then on top of that, to Greg's point, I can understand why it would be missed because to Josh's point, the whole idea of Red Dawn, at least in the 1984 version, is so predicated on the idea of what 1980s patriotism was and how well it was ingrained in, in throughout society and almost in every fabric that if you did not at least have that to some part of your core, then yeah, Red Dawn doesn't really make a whole lot of sense or doesn't land in the same sort of ways. I do want to caution people, if you do watch this classic, and it is a classic, and it's near and dear to a lot of our hearts, that you are going to have to witness a lot of Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen crying. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I don't want to put it out there in front of you. This is, you know, beginning of their career. So yeah, I'm just, I just, I just want to give you a heads up. You're going to have to watch a lot of that um and oddly enough even as a little kid i some for some reason felt mostly in line with c thomas howell's character which is saying a lot about me because that is folks the people that the bird man was talking about who just coldly killed one of his friends that he's known his entire life because he's one of the traitors but he just because one of the other friends as josh pointed out could not do it which I would argue had less to do with the fact that they were friends, more the fact that what they were really trying to say is these guys aren't killers. This isn't something that is natural to the human psyche, no matter what we'd like to think or fantasize. They're not killers. They're not just children, but they're pointing out even Powers Booth's character, the pilot, he even points it out to him like, you guys, this isn't what you are. So it's going to be that much harder to do it. And in part of maturation, a lot of characters had, especially my man, C. Thomas Howell, who apparently thanks to mental floss and a bunch of facts you don't know about, he still has people yelling Red Dawn at him. I think what it was showing was like sort of maturation of what these individuals had to go through in this fantasy of Red Dawn. In the sense that one guy was like still at the point where he wasn't ready to kill and C. Thomas Howell was like, man, I was past that a long time ago. Long time, like. Yeah. Is his his line actually aside from screaming Wolverines is the uh, Powers Booth character? He's notching kills in his in the uh, butt of his rifle, 
with a uh, with a knife, right? So he's just doing slashes back and forth. And uh, the Powers Booth character says, "All that hate's gonna burn you up, boy." And they're in yeah. the, they're in the, they're in the cold wilderness of Colorado. He just looks back and says, "Keeps me warm." So you're right. You know, it's, it's that. And, and also, yeah, Rashad sorry, the Dur- yell Wolverine, I'm not red. Dawn, the yell sorry. Wolverine. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I mean, he, he owned it. Like he just, uh, you know, it's also how the character dies as well. Spoiler alert. By the way, this uh, is the same guy who does blackface and soul man people. So yeah, <laughs> let's, let's not go too far. In our <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose if someone's going to yell anything at you in public, I'd probably go, I'd, I'd hope I'm glad they remember. He's like, he's probably like, I'm glad you remember me. Uh, yeah, for the not, how'd you get into Harvard? <laughs> 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 but you're you're dead on. I mean, it was a total snapshot of eighties, uh, you know, of eighties uh, patriotism in America, and just how we were how we were swapped and how we were raised. So, as I say, certainly, you know, can't help but look back at this right, look back at that right now, and look at the current situation. And say, oh yeah, exactly. This feels like home. But you know, as always, I don't want to just come here just to hear myself talk believe it or not i know for those of you who know me in per- person they don't buy that at all they they know they know what i'm here for but with that i want to turn it out do want to turn it over to the star child and get his his 10 minutes of, of of thoughts on this and take his 10 minutes of fame here real fast people uh birdman's in a profession where he's the only one who gets to talk while he's working so just so we're clear about what you just said <laughs> Yes, I am. And let's all be grateful that I have that. Who knows where I'd be? Probably prison for shooting my mouth off. I mean, that would be a likely, <laughs> it would be a likely scenario. But let's turn it over to the let's turn it over to the star child. See what he has to say about war. Oh, good God, yo. I mean, um, when, when this whole thing was happening, you know, like uh, with Putin, and you know, Putin is a bad man. And, you know, we should do our best to stop Putin, but, um, oh, oh God, imperialist pearl clutching. I just can't handle it. <laughs> like, it's just so much of it right now. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go ahead and sound like, I don't, I don't think it's radical. I honestly don't like, I don't think it's a radical notion to say, you know, like, um, uh, Putin is just looking at the behavior of the rest of the superpowers and saying, what? What, what what i do like what what are you guys what 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 you know like everybody did the exact same thing imagine how happy hong kong would be if we were coming down on china the way we're coming down on russia right now like imagine where the tables would be if everyone were coming at the united states over cuba the way that uh, we're going at Russia right now. Uh, it's, it, it's a matter of, um, you know, who's the imperialist we're going to hate today and how far are we going to go with it? Um, so doing war movies when, you, when I have that kind of mentality is, is a difficult thing because war movies at the end of the day are war propaganda more often than not. Um, we discussed a couple of examples uh, like uh, Platoon, maybe, but obviously, you know, all movies that have to do with Vietnam, like, it was really hard to defend Vietnam then, and it's almost impossible to defend Vietnam now. Um, so you can almost make the argument for those, they kind of descend into character studies, but just about every movie ends up being some sort of war propaganda. Like you take Waterloo, you take uh, Lawrence of Arabia, um, especially Lawrence of Arabia, you know what I mean? Like, that's just perfect. You know, this white guy that just goes off into the desert and, you know, shows all of these brown people the way, you know, like it's... <laughs> it's fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right, exactly, you know? Um, uh, there was a movie called uh, Flag of, Flags of Our Fathers. Oh, my God. I mean, you wanted to be this man, these men. Like, it was just all valor, um, we just mentioned Saving Private Ryan again, you know, these group of soldiers and they're just regular guys put in this situation and they're going to push on through with courage and just American guts. It's fantastic. And when that movie came out, 
you know, that was supposed to be, you know, this, you know, touching new direction and war film. And I was like, this is just one long draft commercial. But yes, <laughs> this is a great movie. I don't want to make it seem like I don't love any of these movies. I still think 1917 is like a brilliant, mind blowing film. One take, folks, one take. You know, like it was it was an amazing movie and it's not to say that I don't enjoy them but I just know what they are so I'm going to do um I'm going to do this on a spectrum I'm going to say what is the best war propaganda movie ever made I'm going to go with 300 these guys didn't even wear armor y'all <laughs> now the bold thing about the movie the bold take on the movie is this is him this is a character in the film telling the story as war propaganda so that's part of the reason why we're seeing it the way we are although at the very end spoiler alert at the very <laughs> end we also don't see him wearing any armor but that's besides the point the point is the 300 soldiers and 300 spartans standing up against the just ocean of soldiers from Persia and they're just shirtless and ripped and sweaty and manly and shouting because this is what war is. This is what war is. Chest beating, yelling, slaughter, and you get to be awesome. All right. Your name will live for tens of thousands of years, even, even though we really only know Leonidas's name, but still, you, know, <laughs> you will live on forever and i say that is the promise that just about every war film makes like they just honestly perfect it better than anybody but they make the war film happen um exceptions again could be say you know somewhere in the middle would be like deer hunter you know like say maybe deer hunter you know just shows what happens in that mentality when you have that mentality dunkirk if you if you haven't seen Dunkirk, Dunkirk is no fun. <laughs> it's absolutely no fun. But again, it keeps showing that valor. Fury was another one. You know, it just keeps showing the valor of the soldiers, the strength of the soldiers. And it it just keeps on falling into the exact same vein, just a, a commercial for war at the end of the day. You know, like come here, be the hero is the promise so what movie doesn't do that what movie can i honestly say war movie or not where you're definitely left at the end cadence to yourself what cadence cadence kinda even then even then i i still say like mo th that still falls into the you know uh, uh uh don't you want this valor you know so which movie doesn't do that i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna go with the hobbit the hobbit from 1977 because let's talk about the hobbit the trilogy i mean yeah we know they shouldn't have made it into three movies <laughs> but let's talk about that for a second at the end of the trilogy uh little bilbo who has used pretty much his wits and that is the point that he is loyal and he uses his wits because he's only like three feet tall to get him and his friends out of these uh, insane situations. Now there's a lot of them. There's like giant spiders and giants and shit like that. And he gets, he's the one who gets all of his friends out of these situations with his, with just using, you know, what he has and a magic ring, magic rings help. But <laughs> that was the point. And at the very end of the movie, this is the trilogy. He goes, he tries to stop the war, fair enough, but he definitely joins a side and fights on the side of the dwarves. I think they missed the entire point. In the animated film from 1977, they follow the book where he literally just looks at everybody around him. Now, don't forget, this is a war that is going to include five armies and he leaves. He says this entire, this entire situation, you guys are insane. You have everything you want. There is no need for this. And he checks out, he leaves. 
That is an anti-war statement. He walks out. He walks out. He walks out on his friends, too. He says, I'm not going to do this. I am not going to kill people, and I'm not going to get killed because you want to go down this idiotic road on your own. And that, honestly, even as a child, stuck with me. That stuck with me. As long as you are involved, you are part of the war. Yes, you have to keep your country safe. Yes, you have to you know, try to protect yourself and your family. But you can't say that you were in, you're not involved. Those are the things that drew you in, but you are, you are absolutely involved in this war. So for anyone to say, oh, you know, the, the, um, the point of that was, you know, if you're going to be loyal, you have to follow your friends over the edge. Like, no, no, I brought you here. You wouldn't have this if it was not for me. And you know, don't forget, this guy's like three feet tall. You know, like he wouldn't be here and have this if this was not for me. And I am saying for you to stop and that this is evil. This entire incident is evil. And he is brave enough to walk away from the entire thing. That would have to be what you would have to see more of for a film to be an anti-war film. And I can't, honestly, I can't think of anywhere outside of the realm of magic, where it happens. Because my last thought on war, in general, it's going to be one of those statements, you know, if aliens came down from outer space, that it would be difficult to reconcile our statement of we hate war and the data. The data says, (laughs) you guys love this shit. (laughs) Uh... Gregory, I, I, I've, you know, get ready and get, get your lube out because it, it's going to be love letter time coming up here in just a second. Uh, because actually, even as I start off, uh, in, in that I love those points, <laughs> I don't, I got, I got, I got some gushing love coming at you because, uh, and I, we were talking about it before the episode, but all I can think of is another Charlie Sheen property, uh, which oh, is Hot Shots, Hot Shots Part Two. Huh? Um, Dude. where, 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 uh, uh Miguel Ferrar, uh, Jose's son looks, you know, they're in the middle of a firefight and he looks straight at the screen and he says, war, it's great. <laughs> it's, I mean, and your point is absolutely dead on. And I hope I acknowledged it well enough in my little treatise here of, 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 you know, my little eighties classic that, yeah, it's impossible. You know, there are, it's damn near impossible. And I think you found, you know, also. Yeah, a reason why I love hanging out with you guys is that I I can come up in with one concept entirely, right? I came in with 80s anti-Russian propaganda, and you went back to the original Ralph Batchy motherfucking Lord of the Rings films. God, I love you. God, I love you, Gregory. That's where, that's where you I'm gotta t- go. That is it's just where you gotta go. Absolutely. Because, um, I didn't I didn't amazing. mention Doctor Strange Love because I was trying to stay away from spoofs, but you know, Doctor Strange Love. Hey, Iron hey. Sky. Um, All right. uh, uh, if you haven't seen Iron Sky, you need to see Iron Sky. <laughs> so, Gregory, just take the love and adoration, my friend. That was that was well. Oh, and three hundred. Oh Christ! You know, every man somewhere deep down inside at one point just wants to be as badass as those guys, right? <laughs> just uh, wants that to just was go the point. And just, uh, yeah, and just you know, do that. Absolutely. Guys, why you guys make me the hill? See, that's the problem with being the hill is that are you really the hill or are people making you the hill? Because I watched 300. You're going last. I, you get the I watched 300. Word. I felt like I was just watching a bunch of fucking idiots. Um, <laughs> just straight across uh, the board. Like, uh, across. Then you got it right. Um, and then on top of that, <laughs> I, I feel like this is a similar conversation that music gets into where, you know, there's a fan of a certain genre or subgenre where they would proclaim there's no X, Y, Z anymore or like X, Y, uh, ABC, you know, like for a good example, I'll stay with rap in the sense of like, it'll be like, oh, there's no like good backpack rap anymore. And, and then it becomes a moment of understanding of influence and selection, because then there's going to be plenty of people who say, well, no, there's thousands, if not millions of artists out there. It's just, you know, you got to search and find it. I would make the same case for war movies that do not genuflect any good part of 
uh, the sort of fantasized belief of war. Um, and I would bring up a movie I've actually brought up before, which is uh, Garm Wards, The Last Druid. I've watched it on YouTube, just to be clear about the quality of this movie. It does have a lifer, a lifer, Lance Hendrickson in it, uh, which God bless him, and the fucking big ass Canadian actor dude. I forgot his name, but he's the guy who uh, shoots uh, the dude from Lost, his daughter. Um, he shoots, he's the one that shoots her. Yeah, that guy. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but the point being is like, it's very clear in this movie <laughs> that n- there's no good part of war. Like, literally, Thanks. this movie kind of ends with the annihilation of species. No, no one is a happy with this. I, I would say like any movie, there, if you're going to have characters and there's going to be some sort of characteristic in which people will aspire to. So in in that regard, your argument's always going to be right because there's always going to be a protagonist some in some way. And the nature of a protagonist to the human psyche would have some characteristic that would be aspiring towards. So technically that kind of always makes you right. But I think subject matter can sort of disprove that, so to speak. Well, with that, with that very strong opening there, I, I'm going to turn over this, this 10 minutes here to the guy who hates being, a, does he really hate being a heel people? Does he, does he really hate being the three of clubs? I, you know, the more yeah. I'm on, the more I'm on this bad boy, the more I understand Eric Bischoff. That's, uh, that's all, that's that's all uh, I'm yeah, going to say. So, hey, all right. You know, the man you was know. trying to run a company. You know, he had a vision. <laughs> you know, he, he had a vision. He had a vision. He had, a vision. He had, a leather, he had the leather jacket that he uh, liked to wear. Awesome. All right. But the, but the time has come. The 10 minutes are on. And we want to hear the book report that the three of clubs has prepared as, as the other two of us were speaking. So, Rashawn, take it away. Uh, <laughs> fun fact. Uh, I, I let it slip to my mom one time that I had a book report uh, due on on Monday, it was the it was Saturday evening. She asked me where I was with the book. I told her, which was like third chapter, and I had to finish the whole goddamn evening uh, weekend reading that book. And um, <laughs> I got a good grade on that book report. I'm just gonna say. So wait until last minute is not always the worst thing, and this is <laughs> the epitome of last minute because up until this moment. Uh, actually, maybe a couple of minutes ago, I had no fucking clue what I was going to say. I still kind of don't know. So here we go. And let's try to keep this on the tracks. Partway through this week, um, it was, the news was released that there's going to be a white man can't jump reboot, which obviously it's clear that Hollywood's broken. They do not know what they're doing. They're just running through their receipts from Blockbuster um, when they were kids um, <laughs> and just being like, yeah, just, I don't know, redo this, wh- whatever. Um, I, I, we were talking about Red Dawn. They re- 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 rebooted that. No, it they does didn't. exist. Guess, no, no, no. Yeah. No. We'll you know, it's, it's no different than us true Star Wars fans who understand that there is a Han who shoots first, but we have also have to reconcile with the fact that there's generations of people coming in behind us who do not understand that. You're, so you're I get it. Not, you're, you're speaking Canadian again. You're talking nonsense. I don't know what you're saying. Continue. You know, they do love me up north. But anyway, so the point being is that it, it made me think, ironically, in the same way Star Wars kind of works, is it made me think what's going to happen 20 years from now. I mean, as much as I don't want this to happen, as much as I can espouse for minutes upon minutes, maybe even hours about why the first one is fine and that it just makes more sense to make a new idea a new property why do you have to reboot everything just watch it still holds up like it literally i i was watching scenes from it the other day there's moments in that that frankly not only does it hold up it just hasn't been replicated in any other way like the storytelling the, the style the pace with the character breakdown the integration of story how about like Hollywood do that instead of just like trying to redo something, which is just going to be a carbon copy. And as we all know, things lose in focus and style and, and, and all great qualities at, as you continue to copy them. So what the fuck? But anyway, this is going to happen. I have no control over 
any of it. Any of us do not have any control over it. People want to make it. They already got Jack Harlow on there because, you know, he's Jack Harlow, I guess. So why not? Um, so it made me think, what's going to happen 20 years from now? Are people going to be nostalgically looking at this property as not only a, a decent film or a fan favorite or a cult classic, but probably in a lot of people's minds, the only version. And I had to come to grips with that and reconcile with that. While also it, it becomes easier when you remember that a lot of shit that you like was a reboot. I mean, a lot of people don't like <laughs> to admit that, but there are plenty of times in my life growing up yeah. in the last 40 plus years where I've been either grooving to something or talking about how great something is, blah, blah, blah. And not even maliciously, I'll have not in some cases, not even my parents who were 30 plus years older than me. Sometimes even my brother would be like, bro, that's like the third version of it. And it's not even that good. And I'm like, what the fuck you say? Like, there's no way that's possible. So it made me think what's going to happen in 20 years. And also it also, like I said, made me think all the stuff that I found near and dear and still do to this day. And since we're on topic of war movies, things like Top Gun, things like, you know, Red Dawn. And then my mind went to the point, uh, point where I also remember it blew my fucking mind that a lot of people saw Top Gun because it technically was. It was a straight up Navy and Air Force commercial. It was an hour and a half long Navy and Air Force commercial. And the best part is like every time I want to be like, that's bullshit. There's no way, even though I know every single person older than me knew that. And I was the only person who didn't because I was four years old when I saw that movie and it just <laughs> locked into my head on what awesome action movies were and what awesome like lead characters were. I mean, you couldn't tell me shit past Maverick when I was fucking four or five, six. Like you couldn't tell me shit. If you, if you were telling me about uh, a protagonist, a top guy, whatever, if you weren't bringing up Maverick in your top 20, I don't even, I don't even know who you are. Like, you just mean nothing to me. And Goose, I'm still upset with Goose. Like, I watch that movie every single time, like, he has a chance. And, and this is hard as, you know, a black individual, especially when you're a little kid. And look, people, representation is a very strong thing. And the best you guys, Merlin, up there, like, you're, 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 you're really reaching for shit. That's like, you're. It was sundown. Come on, you know it was sundown. sundown. Sorry, <laughs> sundown. Yeah. See, that's my fucking point. Fuck, that's bro. my point. See, that's my goddamn point. Sorry, sundown. No offense, man. I, I'll focus on you in another episode. I promise. But point being is like, you're, it, you, there's a lot that you're looking for. So when you get characters that even go past the fact that you don't even care about representation, it means something. So that, it's like it blew my mind. Like, oh my god, I loved a goddamn commercial. What the fuck? What happened? <laughs> but then. Immediately, my mind then jumps to like when I'm in my early 20s going to see Black Hawk Down with a bunch of buddies and remembering as gritty and as fucked up as that movie is. And, and it is, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie. It is one of my favorite movies um, when it comes to that kind of genre. I mean, but like walking out of the movie theater, I remember thinking like how all of us, no matter what our background was, no matter what our level of sort of outward violence was, athletic ability, blah, blah, blah. All of us were like oddly fired up. Like dudes were literally talking about enlisting. And, and for 20 minutes, I was sort of in, inside of it. I was sort of understanding it like never before. I was never that person, even though I've ha I have family in the military, both active and past. I talked about how my grandfather was in, actually in World War II. All thanks to racism, was allowed to fight basically cook for everyone but whatever my brother was uh, is a marine like I, I can keep going but that was never really me even though I did fantasize about like I said being an engineer who can both design make the uh, space spacecraft and fly it not exactly possible but whatever man like I was I was <laughs> race banded but uh point me <laughs> is like uh I remember walking down and, like for 20 minutes as we're all talking about it, Guys were like ready to fucking enlist. I'm, I'm sitting there like finally when I came out of that malaise, that mist of fucking patriotism, I, it hit me. It's like, oh, my God, I just I did watch a, a commercial. I, I did watch a very good 
comprehensive commercial of, as Greg points out, the valor that we all sort of aspire to and these characteristics of getting past impossible odds. I mean, my mind, every time I think about Black Hawk Down, no matter what scene I go to, I'm always ending my thought process with the scene of my man, Josh Harnett, jogging out of the active war zone um, next to a bunch of armored units with the rest of the uh, surviving crew. And like the look on it's like, and I always think in my head, like, could I ever get to that point where not only that just battle for my whole life for a full like day and a half, saw a bunch of people I know get killed, but still have to jog 12 like miles out. So I get that. So nostalgia does play a lot of weird things. It does bring me back to also thinking about Red Dawn. And in fact, I, I cannot lie because um, it doesn't necessarily make me uh, um, a Wolverine, but I'm with Josh and I hate to say it when this whole conflict happened and this just shows, and I apologize for the sort of removal of humanity in this statement because I do not take this lightly, but part of me did sort of genuflect to the idea of, are we going to return back to the glorious days of the 80s where every single fucking bad guy was Russian? <laughs> Like, look, I'm not against Russian people. I know you have nothing to do with this, but you guys don't understand the cinematic fucking magistry that we were under in the 80s where the fucking fallback was Russians. Look, sometimes they sprinkle in Germans and you have to also understand mm. I'm a black man. I talked about representation just earlier. Let me give you the other side that was constantly happening. I did talk about the black psychic, which, by the way, is not the fucking hopeful image. A lot of people think it is. But you really don't want to see the representation show up as a villain, which did happen a decent amount um, throughout your life, especially in the 80s. Normally, it was in a city atmosphere. So you're kind of lucky if you're out in the landscape of sort of like a war, like a big mountainous terrain, desert, kind of like fucking Red Dawn. So, yeah. Uh, can we get back to those movies? Because, uh, Yeah. <laughs> are, are we returning to the, the, the Russians, the ominous Russian bad guy for every fucking thing? Because that was some lazy shit, but it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a mother's milk quality to it, right? There's, at least for our generation, we're like, oh, you know, there was that there's this angst and the terror of being absolutely obliterated at any given moment. But, eh, you know, it's going to be quick. You know, um, uh, it's it's. Every single episode we have done, every single one, my mind is part of the reason why I don't ever really have anything to think about for the next episode. It's because my mind is tormented on things that I leave out and I've been wanting to say that I feel bad. Like, I feel like the people that I'm talking about are going to hear and be like, wait, you didn't fucking bring me up. So I even bring up the fact that Leah Thompson, uh, like almost had her career sort of like oddly arc up and then immediately level out after this or Jennifer Grey. Um, not only did not get along with Patrick Swayze during the filming of it, but also because of a tender scene at the end where she dies, they sort of kind of round the corner and three years later do dirty dancing. And then after that, the poor girl falls, uh, succumbs to sort of the image of what beauty is. And she hacks her nose mm. with a nose job and loses her career because of that. Yeah. Or yeah. I, I even bring up the fact that this also blows my mind when, Red Dawn came out, it was thought of as the most violent movie ever. And there's so many other things. Shout out to Mental Floss. Check out the article. It's pretty cool shit. One of, uh, I, uh, uh, another quick thought that I just know on my own, that is one of the first PG-13 movies that was released. The reason PG-13 movies exist is because of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, but it was not a PG-13 movie. It just the objection was that the violence level was higher than pg and I remember Red Dawn was one of the first films I can ever remember seeing promoted that had PG-13 on the ratings. I, you know, I don't know the, if it was the first, but it was certainly amongst the first. Um, Rashawn, just on a personal note, the moment I knew you and I were you know, going to be all right and that we were brothers from another mother is we were at work together and you walked down with a just smoking hot pair of aviator, like reflecting aviators. And I didn't miss a beat. And I said, damn, man, you know, for Halloween now, you got to throw on a flight suit and go as sundown. <laughs> you <laughs> looked right back at me and said, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yep. because you're right. But that's that's where the motherfucker came. You were right. 
like, like, damn, that would be a nice. Halloween you were like, son of a bitch. <laughs> But, like when yeah, people really? are like, you want hot sauce? I'm like, son of a, son of a bitch. Exactly. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, well, you got fried chicken? Yeah, I like that too. Fuck Dude, you. All right, fuck off. I, yeah, we had Give that. Give me the hot we, sauce. We hugged it out. It was. We knew it was gonna be okay. But you know, God, God bless you. God, you know that. Uh, you you, like I said, wookie. that's why you are. Whether you like it or not, you are Gen X because you did it. You know, right, rightly, wrongly, all of those things. We're admitting to, we're, we're men sitting. We're three guys who owned cats sitting around admitting to our feelings this week, right? That's, I'm. That's what I'm this definitely. Is. It's a I'm war definitely, episode. I'm definitely the kid at the gas and sip, hang out with a bunch of teenagers talking about women and life problems. Without, without a doubt. But yeah, uh, well, thank you. You know, thank you for that because I, I think that was a beautiful treatise. I loved how you, I loved how you brought it back around to that, to exactly the place I land. It's like, God damn it, man, those the Russians. <laughs> you know, it's just so easy. Well, I, I wanted to, I wanted to say like that's exactly it. Like the, uh, um, he hit. Uh, uh perfectly on what i was you know trying to say um with with actual experience when he said that you know when when you left black hawk down you should not want to be in the situation that they were in but no matter what you're you just end up whooped up in it and you're like yeah man like yeah oh my god could you imagine and that day was in and helicopters and and shooting and shit and all of a sudden you're completely forgetting about what a disturbing look into humanity that entire movie was supposed to be because that movie is supposed to be a disturbing unbelievably cynical and jaded look into mm-hmm. not only the nature of war, but into the nature of trying to help. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, Dead and, all, but, I mean, but these, sorry. but but the but these young men leave chest beating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to Greg's point, my favorite character in the whole movie, so we're clear, is Hoot. It made me literally, I still believe Eric Bana has a chance of being a superstar. Only because of Hoot. Hoot is, to me, one of the best fucking characters in any war movie possible. And to Greg's point, he is the most cynical, which also reflects to what I've experienced in real life. And, and I've actually known people who have been in war conflict and not one of them, not one of them. I don't give a shit what any sort of vocal minority says. Not one of them says anything about their experience in a happy way. Not one of them. And the first thing they point out is that the last thing that should ever happen is war. Well, I, you know, I think it, I think we've done a, a decent job as three guys who are not veterans uh, and who grew up in the same period watching these movies. And, you know, as I say, trying to stick into our, you know, uh, best piece of advice we, uh, that Rashawn came up with before we started this show, which is, you know, stick to what you know. Like, don't, you know, I had, I had all sorts of grandiose ideas and all that. And Rashawn said, Fuck you, man. Talk about what you know. And this is what we know. We know about pop culture. We know about its, in, you know, we know about its impact on society and how it, how it holds up a mirror to it. So I think, you know, not, not bad, gentlemen. I'm really impressed with the way that we look at it honestly. That, hey, it's, you know, try as you might, it's pretty damn hard to make a war movie that doesn't end up becoming a propaganda movie. It's, it's art. It's a film. It's not real, right? There's no way it can ever put you truly in that situation no matter how hard you try but uh, you know hats I, off for well those the point who, is those who point have. is i don't think they're actually trying well I, I can also see that as well you know i can i you know who knows uh but uh, you know the, the the point where your point stands up greg uh, i'll never forget there were navy recruiters right outside of top gun every, every time it came i remember <laughs> the tables so as, as you know and that goes back to rashawn as well that uh, that uh, you know it was a two hour long commercial right <laughs> two hour long yeah. recruitment commercial that got you all set to hook up with kelly mcginnis and <laughs> spoiler alert turns out that that wasn't gonna happen no matter how hard <laughs> you tried <laughs> Look, Josh, I, Josh, I know you got to go. I know we got to cut recording, but can anyone, someone needs to explain to me the thought process that happens when you go over someone's house for the first time. And one of the first things I hear about is like, yeah, I'm feeling kind of dirty. You mind if I take a shower? Take a shower? <laughs> like that is one of the most what the fuck moments in the entire movie that everyone just skips over. And I have problems with that. I need, I need <laughs> someone to talk to me about that. Like, 
before uh, we even get to the grapes, before we even get the sad story with Marvin Gaye in the background, I mean, uh, uh, or uh, sorry, um, Otis Redding in the background. Otis Redding, yes. Before we get, before we even get to the goddamn jeans and the volleyball in 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 on the beach, I, I need someone to talk to me about like who went through the script and said, "All right, so wait, hold on, he's gonna take a shower." Like when yeah, he gets there, right? Yeah. It's his, right. is it his house? On oh, it's her date. house. It's her, it's her house. house. First mm-hmm. time he got there. First time oh, he got there. He's just taking a shower. He's not even gonna like you know take a step above him, like maybe take a shit or something. Like he, no, but no, we're gonna to, imply that. Come on, it implies that. He's like he doesn't using say laundry. It. That is that is a step. <laughs> that, is, that is a very bold step, my friend. I'm gonna take a shit, a shower, and a shave, right? That's what he's saying. He just only mentions the shower, but that's what's we gonna only happen. we we only have so many clean towels, and we are trying to <laughs> keep keep things down. Like I don't know what her laundry. He didn't know what her laundry situation was then. He didn't know if she she had to go across town to fucking do her towels and shit like that. Like he doesn't know what kind of inconvenience. That 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 part has always bothered me. I'm sorry. It, it, as it as it Indeed. damn well should. As it damn like well goose should. Goose dying, shower scene, scene, and then like everything else. Right. Even though you don't see it, it's just the fact. Yes, the the sheer well goes to his character, the sheer brazenness. <laughs> I'm just yeah, gonna go and, clean and the guy from my side in the guy from my science project literally having his career follow the his character's arc. Like literally just like, yeah, I'm out. Couldn't I was it. I was the top. Now I'm well, out. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that in our safe in our safe little foray into war, thank you so much for coming out and joining us this week. While we have you here, another another safe little thing you can do, please recommend the show. Please sit out there, tell a friend, tell a friend, and then head on over to uh, uh, Apple Podcast, iTunes, give the old rate and review. Really hoping for that five star. You can do it on Spotify now too as well. Uh, you know, feel free to give Joe Rogan a poor review. I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, I'm that guy. I don't care. Um, but yeah, the, we really do appreciate that. I'll leave a uh, merch link on the, uh, on the episode description as well. So if you want some, if you want to be the coolest kid on the block, sporting some steam gentlemen merch, uh, you know, feel free to kick on the click on that. Samuel Jackson, if you want to come on our podcast and uh, blast Joe Rogan, you have free reign. We'll, uh, we'll give you the full hour. Absolutely fucking lutely and just, just saying I, just I another would, platform just would be, we, we want to be there for you i sir. would be 110 percent in it and as a bonus i will not mistake you for lawrence fishburne <laughs> like <I'm, laughs> i can make the i can make that promise not to be the white guy who mixes you up with lawrence fishburne okay yes. uh you know <laughs> don't so. I, I cannot promise if i won't hand you a broom uh, uh, <laughs> just to see what happens well just, just see. like did you learn did, well, did you learn are you still so a disease rhinoceros pizzle oh <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but no Sam. shit man accent. samuel samuel l on this podcast that would be i i i might have a stroke from happening. long kiss good night is a highly underappreciated movie uh, and i love you sir certain certainly is it certainly is yo well, no, bring mace windu back man Oh, he wants that. And he oh, he's going to bring Mace Windu back. It's gonna, I think it's going to happen, people. It's, I think it's, it's I, 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 I still believe. To, Thank to you. Quote, Just the fuck, uh, fuck out of here. You're Disney. You have no in the, shame. In the comics, <laughs> extended, bring him back. in the comic, comic extended universe that Disney, I think, kind of canceled, he does live. Uh, well, I think, like I say, I, I, I'm, I'm 100% a believer that we're going to see him soon. I think we're going to see him sooner than we think. But that's just my opinion. That is only my opinion. But nevertheless, it is I, Josh the Birdman, thanking you so much again for tuning in to our little forum once again uh, on pop culture and social commentary. Uh, and in the meantime, this is me as we're heading on off into the weekend. Just, just urging you to keep your head up and keep your head esteem on. 